Hi there, traders. This is Brad Gilbert with the FX Market Insight for Friday the 28th of June. All right. Now, just as we uh, close out the month, we're obviously uh, heading towards the G20 meeting. And that's sort of pretty much left the major currency pairs pretty much unchanged from yesterday. Now, there's, um, you know, if anything, a little slight progression from yesterday's moves. The standout pair here is clearly dollar cat. Okay. It's got the uh, central bank sentiment. Uh, the Fed and the Bank of Canada all working towards the uh, movement to the downside on dollar CAD and also all the technical charts have broken down on dollar CAD as well. So you got CAD fundamentals and US fundamentals working together. And that's why that's the best pair. The rest of the pairs here, it's a bit of a dog's breakfast because we have got the overall sentiment from the Fed and the other central banks clashing, right? So everyone's gone on a bearish path and that confuses and muddles the uh, picture somewhat. Today's market conditions, well, we've got normal liquidity, but that momentum is really being diffused by the upcoming G20. And there's a lot of expectations around a lot of different things for this event. Uh, so what have we got now? This is, now we're starting to get into epic proportions for geopolitical events. We've got uh, Brexit uh, still rumbling on, the China-US trade issue, which we may get some, obviously get some answers. Uh, the US and China are meeting during, after, and or before the G20. We've still got this US-Iran conflict, which has settled down somewhat, but still simmering. And then obviously the G20 summit. So there's plenty of left field events that could really stir the pot. But you know what? When you're looking at the upcoming opportunities, focusing on the pair that's got the most clearest direction is, is the key to it. And then trying to work out where the potential momentum is going to come from for the next... 24 hours. Now, the euro CPI flash estimate, very important for the overall, uh, you know, future forward guidance from the ECB. We get some really dire inflation numbers there, then the euro is going to move to the downside. At the same time, if they come in strong, which is really unexpected, then we might see that a slight move to the top side. And obviously, to me, the most important or the best opportunity, because it goes with the pair with the um, clear sentiment, is the Canadian GDP numbers. All right, now, just on the face of it, I mean, just if you're looking at these two results, I mean, if you're wondering what pair you, you could possibly be trading, you can look at Euro CAD, okay, clearly. You know, if you get, uh, say, weak Eurozone numbers, strong GDP, well, Euro CAD's gonna be 100 points lower, you know, even though they are three hours apart. So you are sort of looking at, for a potential trading opportunity there. Now, let me just bring you across to the charts. I think there's a, you know, just having a look at the majors and see where they are is always a, uh, a good thing to see what's going on. As you can see, there's no real major moves set in the house on fire, but the um, Aussie, Kiwi and CAD all moving um, sort of positively. And that's pretty much because of the expectations around a, a good trade deal between the US and China. All right, so that's actually underlying or underpinning those moves. And that's why those pairs are moving uh, in that direction. If you're looking at the European pairs as such, the euro and sterling, just trading sideways. Obviously, sterling's got the added extra issue of Brexit. But, you know, the market is waiting to see if this US dollar weakness is going to continue or whether the euro weakness is going to come into play. And that's obviously where the Eurozone CPI flash estimate is going to come really right into play today. The, um, when you're looking back up here at the uh, dollar yen, well, you know, it's once again tweaking above resistance trend lines. It's all sort of a bit of noise to me. Overall, it's trading sideways. We are waiting for an escalation of these uh, weird events, the US-Iran situation, you know, the US-China. There's, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Geopolitics, you can see at the end of the week, it's sort of diffused a bit, and that's where dollar yen is trading sideways. Now, that's all by the by. Now, when we're looking at the best trading opportunities, to me, dollar cat is, is the standout, right? Um, if I just bring you across here, just having a look at the, um, the major part. Where is my thing? Okay, so just looking at dollar cat on the uh, hourly charts here, right? So it's got really, technically, even though it's a short-term chart, it's got pretty good structure. Starting up here around 134, uh, what, 2030. Um, we had the weak uh, inflation numbers. Then we had the slightly... Um, well, not so bad retail sales figures, trading sideways, and then the, uh, the move in oil, which is over here, going that way, which is actually up for those who are new to this. 
I've inverted that uh, the oil chart to make sure it correlates with dollar CAD. And you can see the correlation here with oil and dollar CAD is acting very, very well. So we've got a trend line here that's got really good structure. One, two, you know, three, four, say five touches. You know, this thing is either going to keep going down or we could see a, uh, a bunch of stops triggered here. And I think even if we get, um, say, slightly uh, weaker GDP, we might see a little spike, but then the overall trend is down anyway. So it's not going to be that long. Okay, so there might be a bit of cash in a stop loss run move if the Canadian GDP numbers are weak. But then we have to wait and see how these, um, especially these US-China trade issues sort of plays out. And um, let me just turn my phone off. And then just coming back to the, uh, the other charts, have a look here. There's a couple of opportunities across the board uh, on dollar CAD. And just looking at crude, right? It's obviously a key focus at the moment. So making sure you're, you're tracking this is very important. Um, we've got a resistance line here, which has got a number of touches on it. And uh, these two tweaks are sort of just new recent highs this week. But you know what? A move above this level should see, you know, it opens up a clear run, possibly up to these previous highs, up towards 63 bucks. Now, what's that going to do for us? Well, it's going to push dollar CAD down. Now, dollar CAD caught up with the US dollar is a bit of a conundrum, right? Because you just don't know what Trump's going to do. But we do have CAD yen here, which is already moving to the top side. So to me, I'm starting to focus in on if that crude price breaks above, um, you know, I can actually just draw the resistance line back here in here on crude. Okay, so you've got two resistance lines here. Obviously, uh, CAD yen is much higher, but this resistance line here, if CAD yen breaks through 59, sort of 70, or well, maybe an opportunity just to get long dollar uh, CAD yen, sorry, at market, and look for that move because it's, you know, it's still a good chance for this thing to keep going higher up towards these highs around 84, you know? Anything's, anything's on, everything's on the table at this point. So to me, there's, there's a few opportunities here, but when you are looking at, at CAD and CAD's got a very clear direction, make sure you're checking out all the uh, CAD crosses. Euro CAD, you can see it's been trading sideways and I was into this um, uh, the other week, just around 149.80, just before the CPI numbers. We've had a bit of a, an up and down situation since then, but it's that clearly trading to the downside. So weak Euro CPI numbers, strong CAD, Euro CAD should be down around 47, 147 something come Monday. Of course, the spanner in the works is this G20, right? So make sure you keep an eye on that. Aussie CAD, weak um, Canadian GDP numbers, maybe a chance to get long Aussie CAD to the top side. Aussie is slowly progressing to the top side. But uh, to me, Crude and CAD Yen, they're the pairs to really be watching uh, pretty closely as we go into this G20 and into the weekend. All right, so it's the end of the month. There's no need to be a hero and try and make all your dough on the one day. Uh, just be aware, I think these opportunities that are coming up today are going to be you know, reasonably short term, you know, maybe four to six hours or something like that. Obviously, um, the CAD GDP being a bit of a focus, but we are getting into day one of the G20. So you, you can expect to start to see or hear some random uh, releases, especially from Trump, which is, is uh, you know, trading is already a little bit difficult. So we want to see how this US dollar sentiment goes and that's where it's going to come from, the geopolitical events. And that's a bit of a weird one. So make sure you, to me, I'm not falling in love with big long-term positions. The CAD or dollar CAD is my preferred trading pair at the moment. And that's where I'll be uh, putting most of my attention. All right, guys, that's the uh, FX Market Insight for uh, Friday. Uh, hope you have a good weekend and, and most of all, a good trade day. Cheerio.